Welcome to sequencing events with the timer chop. In addition to handling single events, many times we need to think about a series or sequence of events that happen in time. Let's take a look at how we might use a timer chop to address some of these needs. To get started, let's begin by adding a few movie file ends here into our network. I'm going to grab one to get started, and then I'm going to go ahead and copy that. I think I want a total of four here in our network. I'm going to change the images that are selected, so I'm going to use the banana. I'm going to use the jelly beans here. I'm going to also use trillium. And I'm finally going to grab our oil drums. Now, one thing that we might need to do is think about how we move between these. And in fact, if we use a switch top, we might think about uh, a kind of clear way that we could sequence between these. So I could uh, box select all my operators, connect them to my switch top. And now we could use the index parameter to move between different images. We could say go from our banana to our jelly beans, all the way to our oil drums, and then back to our trillium. We can move between these without necessarily need to be in a specific index or following this in a specific order. We can kind of randomly jump between these, which is excellent. And in fact, many times we need that kind of solution. But how can we set that up so that we don't have to actually enter a value inside of this parameter ourselves? Well, let's take a look at our timer chop and see what we might use to make this easier. Our timer chop has a feature here on the segments page for a segment stat. Our segment stat is a parameter that will be used to specify a segments table. So let's go ahead and add a table dat here into our network. Our table dat needs to have a header called length. So here we'll make that viewer active. We'll make sure that we name our first column length and let's add a few rows underneath it. Let's specify some time so we can do one, two, and one to get started. And back here on our timer chop, we can then think about how we might use this segment stat. Let's grab our table and drop it right here into our parameter. Our segment stat is now used to define a set of serial timers. So these will run one right after another. Their unit is in seconds. So we'll have a timer that runs for a length of one second, then two seconds then one second again. And we can see the output for this. If we head to the timer, head to our outputs page, head down to segment, make sure we turn that on. And now let's start our timer. When we start our timer, we'll see our first segment was one second long. We've got a segment for two seconds. And then our final segment is right here, also one second. Let's see that again. So there's one, one, two, we're in one, one, we're in two. Whew, we made it. Well, how can we use that information? What might be a way that we can actually use some, uh, use our segments to say drive the index of our switch top? Well, let's go ahead and make our table viewer active one more time. Let's right click, add another column, and let's call this switch index. Let's grab this name and back on our timer chop on the segments page, we're going to use a column that we can turn into a custom channel. Let's head back to our timer page and reinitialize our timer. We'll see now that we have a new channel called switch index. So maybe what I'd like to do is think about here in this first segment, I want to be in a banana. Then I'd like to jump down to the trillium and trillium here is at two for our index. Next, I'd like to jump back to the jelly bean. So let's jump back to one and let's add another row here. I'll set this for two seconds for duration. And this time I'll jump all the way up to our oil drums, our last image here. So we can see that we're gonna go zero, two, one, three. How can we use this? Let's right click on the output of our timer. Let's add a null chop here into our network. Let's make our null chop viewer active. Let's grab our switch index channel, drag that on top of our switch top, and then we'll drop release that channel and set this as a chop reference right on our index parameter. Now let's head back to our timer and let's reinitialize and start it to see what happens. We can see now as we move through our segments, we're going to use that switch index to jump to the image that we want to display. This is great. This gives us a lot of flexibility and a lot of freedom to think about how we can change the order of these or how we can add additional ones without needing to say, connect more operators to our switch. 
What else might we do here with our segments table? Well, back on our segments page, we'll see that we also have a parameter for custom for columns to info dat. What might that be? Let's right click inside of our segments table. Let's add another column and let's call this text. We might imagine that we have some additional text that we want to display on top of our image. Now we could certainly use a text top right here in between our text and our switch. But if we wanted to say, reuse one of these uh, inputs, we might have a hard time thinking about how we dynamically update this. So let's instead think about how we might use a text top here after our switch and then change the text here. What might that look like? Well, let's start by giving ourselves some just simple text. We might have intro, then we have slide one, slide two, and finally outro. But how can I actually grab this information? Well, our timer chop tells us that we have our columns to info data. Let's go ahead and grab this column text. Let's place it here in this parameter. Let's reinitialize our timer. And now let's add an info dat here to, into our network. With our info dat added to our network, let's drag and drop our timer on top of it. And we'll now see that we have a row here that allows us to grab this column's information and output it into our info dat. We might then grab our info dat over here in our text top. Let's assign that as our dat. We can clear out our starting text. And what I want to use is I want to use the row that is six and the column that is one. Let's take a look at that over here on our text top. Let's say move our text here up to the left hand, up to the upper left hand corner. On the font page, we can set that to left top and we can give ourselves a little bit of a margin and we might even turn up the text size. Now we should see as we run our timer, and we'll get a little closer here to our text top to see this happen. When we start our timer, we'll have that text displayed here in our upper left-hand corner. This will give us the freedom to change that text without necessarily needing to also think about how we change that in line. This might become really important if we say wanted to return back to one of these other slides. So let's say that we did something like this. Maybe we decide that after slide two, we actually want another slide. So let's add another in here. Or in fact, maybe we wanna insert it here between slide one and slide two. We'll make this a, a length of two. We're gonna go back to the zero width index and we'll call this slide 1.5. Now here down on our text top, we'll see that when we reinitialize and start our timer, We'll end up going back to the banana image, but we have a different piece of text here that's displayed. There are lots of ways that we might use this idea here with our timer chop. And it's really powerful to think about not only how can we insert custom channels into our timer, but how can we also insert custom information into an info dat. 